Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I want to talk about Summit Arena, which should be coming with the Sigma and Lambda update, which is going to be released on August 8th, as long as we continue to follow the Chinese server schedule. Now, before I begin, I should mention that Star Lost did a great introduction video on Summit Arena. I will link this video in the video description below. And in fact, you might actually want to check out her video first before watching mine, because hers is more an overview of how Summit Arena works, as well as good characters for it, while I'm going to get into the practicalities of Summit Arena as opposed to doing an overview. So before I begin this video, I want to thank Newbie on the Discord that I'm a moderator for, which is the Song of El Salia, because he's the one who plays on the Chinese server and provided me with all the screenshots that I'm going to be using in this video. So let's begin. Now, I'm just going to cover a few points about Summit Arena, the details of it, before I really get into the nitty gritty of things. So first of all, each season of Summit Arena lasts 12 weeks and then it resets. This is 12 weeks of doing the Summit Arena battles. So you have a lot of time to get your Summit Arena team properly set up, even if you are not ready for Summit Arena when it is released next month in, on August 8th. Now, the second thing is they will change the schedule a bit for PvP. What's going to happen is World Arena will continue to run on Mondays and Fridays at the normal times that they're running at. However, Summit Arena will now replace World Arena on Saturdays and Sundays. More importantly though, unlike World Arena, Summit Arena actually runs for 9 hours per day. On the Chinese server, it runs from 12pm noon all the way to 9pm. So that's a lot of time to get battles in. Which means even if you start your Summit Arena matches later on in the event, you can still pretty easily rank up you know, and get the rewards, the weekly rewards as well as the final rewards for each season. So they just give you a lot of time to farm your way up in the event. Now, the other thing is, once you hit the silver rank or the gold rank, just like World Arena, uh, let me just bring World Arena up quickly in fact, right? If you look at the tiers, you have bronze 3 to 1, then silver 3 to 1, then gold 3 to 1, then finally Langrisser. So when you hit the silver rank, for example, and it's let's say 1300 points, you cannot drop below 1300 points to drop back down to bronze. So if you get into a certain ranking, same thing for gold. From gold 3, you cannot drop into silver. So once you get to a certain ranking, you're in that ranking and you won't drop below it. Uh, of course, if you get to, let's say, gold 2 and you lose some points, you can still drop down to gold 3. Within each rank, you can drop at will, but once you hit a certain rank, silver and gold, you're fine. Next. In, ter uh, in terms of rewards, uh, Summit Arena is really, really worth doing. Okay? The weekly rewards and the seasonal rewards for Summit Arena are very, very good. Unlike World Arena where you can mostly skip it, you know, because it's just, it's some nice crystals, of, you know, but it's not exactly required to do. Like you could stop at silver and be perfectly happy right because you'd be getting crystals per week okay so let's bring up the most important thing and the thing that i'm sure would interest everyone which is the rewards of summit arena and i'm just going to bring up the screenshots that i have so bear with me for a moment while i bring that up hmm aha there we go Okay, so here we are, and you can see here, this shows some of the silver rank rewards as well as the gold rank rewards and the Langrissa rank rewards, okay? And these are weekly rewards for doing Summit Arena as long as you're at that certain ranking. So each week, you get, once again, a decent amount of crystals. Most importantly, you get SSR level enchant scrolls so that you can keep enchanting your equipment to get better enchants. Okay? 
finally, you get a decent amount of honor points. And as we all know, honor points are quite good for the chance to get SSR accessories. So all in all, and again, once you hit a certain ranking, right? Let's say you hit gold 3, you're stuck at this ranking. You won't drop out of the gold ranking. So you'd be every week you'd be guaranteed to get these kind of rewards. So very, very good rewards for getting up those ranks. It makes it very worthwhile. Next, let's talk about the seasonal rewards, right? The rewards that you get for each season. And here we are with the first season's rewards. And so there's also there also does seem to be like a competition in terms of, you know, if you're the champion of the season, you get, in fact, 8,000 Trinity Crystals as well as some other stuff. Runner up, you can see, gets 7,000 crystals and some other stuff, and so on. So, great, great, great rewards as well from, you know, being like, let's say, the champion of the league or whatever. But other than that, there's also three items that you get for hitting silver, gold, and Langrissa regs. And for each season, it's the same item type. So, silver always gives you a soldier skin. Gold always gives you a certain hero skin. And finally, Langrissa ranking gives you an avatar frame. So you can see that from the first season, you get an Emmerich skin as well as a Lancer skin. So let's bring those up. The Emmerich skin looks like this. Yeah. Egyptian Pharaoh type character, which is actually quite pretty, for it, I have to say. And then, then the Lancer skin is as follows. So, Phallic Soldiers gets a skin to look like this, which is pretty awesome, I have to say. And Elite Lancers gets a, their skin as well. So, quite nice, you know? And it's not, honestly, getting to Silver rank, Silver 3, shouldn't be too hard. So, those are the rewards for Season 1. For Season 2, uh, I was shown the skin and it's right here. Quite an awesome skin, I have to say. So, granted, you know, each season taking 12 weeks and it being released in August, we're not going to get season 2 until, what, January of 2020, I would say? So we're a long way away from getting this awesome skin, but, you know, it's nice to see it now. So. That's the seasonal rewards as well as your weekly rewards. Now, let's now talk briefly about a few mechanics of Summit Arena. First is that Summit Arena does not require you to use all your characters of your own. Okay, There's actually a hero selection. In addition to the hero selection tab where you select you know, up to 15 characters for your characters that you plan to use for Summit Arena, there's also a tab for, I guess, mercenary heroes, if you will, that you can bring along with your characters. And the mercenary hero tab, the way it works is, you, there's every week, there will be 10 random characters on this mercenary tab. And you can put up to five of these characters on your team. And all the servers share the exact same heroes. So basically, everything is equal across all the servers. If you're lucky, you know, there may be very good heroes for you to select. Like, let's say, I don't know, a 7k power Leaden or whatever. So let me just quickly show you images of the hero selection tabs then. So here, for example, is when you select your personal heroes, right? You have your hero list, you just choose who to put into your pool of 15 characters. In addition to this tab, there's also the mercenary tab, as I mentioned. And the mercenary tab will have 10 random heroes. And you can see, for example, that because clearly uh, Newbie, in this case, has selected his Zerida and so on, and Bozal and Lana, they're grayed out. So he's not allowed to select these three characters from the mercenary tab, unless he removes his own personal Bozal and uses someone else's. Okay, but. The 10 rent heroes are all completely random. You don't know who they belong to unless you take a look at their info page. 
So let's bring up one of their info pages, for example. So here is an info page of Sigma, right here, right? And you can see this Sigma has all SSR level gear, right? Here, max out soldier bonds, and you can select, and you can change the hero's skills and soldiers at will. Another example here would be the Jessica on this page, right? Level 60. And this Jessica is all SR gear equipped. So not that great by comparison. So there you go. It means, basically it means if you can't field a full team of 15, all with gear, you can always add mercenaries to your party. They might not fit in that well, but it allows people who don't have the full 15 characters to be able to play as well. And let's be honest, not everyone has 15 sets of gear or at this time. So, there we go. So those are some of those important mechanics of Summit Arena. Now, let's talk about the strategy involved in Summit Arena then. And this will be the last portion of the video. First, okay, Star Lost had explained about how pick ban works. And pick ban is incredibly important and it'll definitely take some experience to master. So it's a good idea to get some games into Summit Arena early on, you know, take your losses if you will or whatever, but just to learn how pick ban works. The reason it's so important is because everyone ends up with basically nine characters banned, five characters selected, and then one character unused, right? So there's actually a lot of strategy involved in this as a result. For example, you know, if your opponent chooses to play Lana as a mage character, well, what you really want to do is prevent Lana from having a faction buff. So characters you want to ban is probably Bozel, Luna, and Shafaniel, right? If you can ban those characters, Lana won't have a faction buff, then she will not do anywhere near as much damage. So that's fairly simple. Um, other strategies would mean, let's say, not allowing your opponent to have three AoE attackers on his team, so he can't AoE blast you to oblivion, right? Uh, another strategy, for example, would be if your opponent picks Leon or Luna, right, you will make sure to ban the enemy Ulti Muller. Because Ulti Muller's faction buff allowing characters to ignore terrain is absolutely overpowered. Yeah. If your opponent had a Leon or Luna who could get faction buffed and then move at will, you're probably screwed right there, right? They'll charge in, kill off one of your characters, and then retreat. So, very important play. You know, if the enemy picks Ulti Muller, ban their Luna and Leon. If they pick Leon or Luna, ban their Ulti Muller, right? Pretty simple. Um, so there's a lot of strategy involved in even this pick ban portion, and it can make or break your chances of victory. One critical point about this is that once all five characters is selected for each player, you're actually allowed to change your character's skills and their as well as their soldiers before the battle actually begins so this is quite useful because for example let's say you allowed your enemy to uh, pick juggler as his tank okay and you ended up with let's say three mages well juggler hard counters aoe attacks so maybe instead of having your mages having let's say two aoe strikes like heaven sanction and black hole right you might decide to replace, let's say, the Heaven Sanction with Dark Reaper. So you can one-shot target the enemy, let's, the enemy juggler or whatever, so that the AoEs can then be effective after that. So that would be an example of a change to make for your skills before the battle begins. Another thing about this is that your party setup, your party of 15 setup, I would say the best combo, and I'm actually going to go back to the uh, Summit Arena images that I have access to. 
So, here we go, right? In my opinion, the best parties for Summit Arena would have two tanks, okay? And the reason for two tanks is pretty straightforward. In this case, there is here, the two tanks, Juggler and Landius. These two are actually the best tanks for Summit Arena. And the reason for two tanks is because of the pick ban system, right? If your enemy, let's say, uh, now, everyone gets to ban one character before you get to pick a character, right? So by having your enemy ban one of your tanks, let's say, you can always pick the other tank. So that's why two tanks is so important, okay? Generally speaking, it's recommended to bring four healers and then after the four healers you end you have a choice of nine different dps characters and those nine dps characters whether they're single target attackers or aoe attackers it's kind of up to you so that is the most common combo two tanks four healers nine dps in this example i think we see only two tanks right liana and Chloe. So I guess for this example, his first pick will always pretty much always have to be a tank or a healer. And his second tank would be the uh, would be the other the opposite. So either he picks tank then healer or healer then tank. And then following it up with the damage dealers is what this setup looks like. Perfectly viable. I can't say it's, uh, I personally don't think it's the greatest selection simply because, you know, he can't pick a damage dealer first, right? There's that limitation. For example, everyone considers, on the Chinese server, Leonhard is considered the first pick whenever possible, right? But this tank and healer selection makes it so that picking Leonhard first is impossible. So for good or for ill, there's some limitations to newbies set up, but you know, it is what it is, right? You make do with the characters that you have leveled up as opposed to what is absolutely ideal. All right, so just a quick thing I should say. Now, I did say that you should have two tanks, four healers and nine DPS. So you can end up with, let's say a combo like one tank, three healers, because your opponent ne never banned any of your healers, and then one DPS as a result, right? Now, before you say such a combo would lose the fight, or it's guaranteed to lose, think about the team that I use for my Timeless Trials in general, right? Normally, my team for Timeless Trial would be one tank, Sophia and Liana, right, for rewind and again, and then a DPS, which in my case is usually Leon, and then the final character is generally Bozal, but it could work just as well with Tieris, who could attack Blessing and Miracle. And such a party was extremely effective for Timeless Trial. Well, a similar party, if you somehow get to play it, could work incredibly well for Summit Arena as well. If your opponent wants to give you, let's say, a Leon or a Shuri who can get Attack Blessing and Miracle to, and then again as well, and then Rewind, I think you're bound to win. Just saying. So there is nothing wrong with getting a 1 tank, 3 healer, 1 DPS party, if that's what you end up with. So quickly, let's talk about the tanks that are really good in Summit Arena. And really, all the tanks that are really good have a personal faction buff. The ideal tanks, as I mentioned, is Juggler and Landius. Juggler because he hard counters AoE strikes by healing up everyone else. But and Landius because he can retaliate against two range attacks, right? And he has the immortality reviving ability. So both of these tanks are great. And really the ideal ones for PvP in Summit Arena. And there's also things like there's great combos you can do for the the 15 characters based on your tanks, right? For example, Juggler faction buffs Origins. 
and maybe you don't have Landius, and so you decide to add Freya as your second tank. Okay, well, both Juggler and Freya can buff the Origins faction, which means if you fill up your team with other Origins characters, they can all be guaranteed to have faction buff. Getting them into range of attack may be an issue, of course, but being able to have a whole team of characters that are faction buffed is a pretty big advantage if you think about it. Yeah. So characters like Kirikaze, Silver Wolf, you know, uh, Die Hard, you know, Tiaris, they would all be amazing if your tanks are Freya and Juggler. Just as an example. Other very very good characters for DPS would be also be characters that can faction buff, right? Alte Muller, who would frequently get banned. Shefania, who can be a mage uh, as well as faction buffer. Luna, who can faction buff or be a single target strike killer. Zerida, uh, faction buff for Meteor as well as single target strike killing. There's tons of characters he, who can faction buff and who are very dominant. And based on those characters, right, you can put fill in your remaining DPS slots accordingly. All right, so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about Summit Arena at this time. Now, your 15 characters you'll have to decide on. Uh, definitely not an easy selection, that's for sure simply because of, once again, those pick ban rules. So, you know, you should start definitely preparing at this time for Summit Arena if you haven't already, because it's clearly going to be a very important part of, I guess, your daily, your weekly play in Langrisser Mobile, and because the rewards, as I mentioned, are great, both in terms of skins and, and just the weekly rewards, and I think it's personal I personally think it's gonna be very strategic and very interesting. So uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.